Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, Aloha Press Show. My name is JC out here in Hot Atlanta. Joining today my co-host Jeff. I'm beautiful California. What's going on, buddy? How you doing? It's 65 and sunny. Played golf again today. Smoking, drinking, hanging out. Don't have to work tomorrow. I'm doing just fine. You know what was the greenest show this week? The Waste Management. Phoenix Open down in Arizona. I mean, they they surpassed the little snow drizzle a couple weeks ago. They got the course prep ready to go. And fuck, Jeff, it's absolutely – I've got to say, this is the one tournament in since this pandemic has all started that's been fucking worth watching. Like, it's it was exciting for the most part. I was jacked up about Thursday and Friday. It was very exciting, and, and it was better than the majors without the fans. It was – and Saturday, Sunday kept me glued to the TV. I mean, Sunday, you can't beat Sunday. You had all those guys coming down the stretch, and you knew you had the Super Bowl coming on after. It was awesome to have fans back, to have the excitement, the buzz in the air. Um, you know, there might only let 5,000 in a day, but I'm pretty sure that they uh, congregated to two holes. It, they congregated over, like, <laughs> one player, to be quite honest with you. And it was, his name is Jordan Speed. He's got it. He's got it. Wow. wow. Saturday was different. I mean, it felt different. It was just the atmosphere was different. They, it felt like 5,000 fans were cheering him on. But come Sunday afternoon, I, I'm pretty sure there was 5,000 disappointed fans when it was all said and done. Well, yeah, everybody there wanted him to win. It was the feel-good story. The announcers wanted him to win. I mean, they covered him like he was Tom Brady. You want to speak now for Birdie. All right, get in there. Oh, oh my gosh. Man, I guarantee you what a birdie. Oh, no, no, no. Definite belly flop. You no know, I didn't see him play like that on Saturday. Not, I, I, don't like, I don't like him. You know, I don't root for him. I, I did. I think he was going to win on Sunday. Absolutely not. But he's the guy. Hey, he's been there. He's done that. You know, he's won a bunch of times. He's won three majors. He fed off the crowd. And that's what kind of got everything excited to have that atmosphere again. Um, and we saw it on Sunday. Some guys folded with the crowd. It got to them. They started hitting really bad shots and, and essentially got themselves out of the tournament on one single hole when guys like Brookies fucking stepped up and thrived on it and fucking stuck it in there and said, here you go. Xander behind him. Oh, that looks pretty good right here. How about 19? How about 19? Woo! What's good shot? <laughs> so if you guys miss this fucking golf tournament, it's – I, I am I'm so, I feel bad for you. So I mean, just to give you a quick recap, it Xander Shoffley, Jordan Spieth were both tied at 18 under, and they looked like it was going to be a two horse race because Brooks Kepka was five back. I mean, Steve Stricker was six or seven back. I mean, Roy McIlroy was way out of it. Uh, JT was kind of in the mix for a little bit there, and you just thought Sunday was just going to be just just the Jordan Spieth Xander Shoffley show. And sure enough, like on the number one tee, you know, Jordan Spieth steps up and just just hits a giant slice into the cacti uh, with a hybrid. And it just was like, oh, and you quickly realize that Jordan Spieth had a bad, bad. He didn't know where his tee ball was going. And don't get me wrong. He played absolutely incredible golf on Sunday or excuse me, on Saturday, shooting a 61. He had the crowd behind him. And it really showed like as soon as you get some momentum on Saturday, like people People are going to ride that. Hell, they had a guy in the crowd dressed as Borat trying to jump into a pond fighting with the cops when 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 Jordan's rolling him 45-foot birdie putts. It just – it was it was, it was was fun to have it back. It was fun to have that energy. And then Sunday, sure enough, the uh, the energy was kind of sucked out of the room there for a while, it, I, at least for 12, 13 holes until Brooks kind of started taking over the golf tournament because the next guy in line was James Hahn, who – or John Hom, James Hahn, I, I don't J- know. James, yeah. They showed him a little <laughs> bit, but he just imploded uh, down the stretch playing with Brooks. He did. It, 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 those guys in the lead, they, they were 18 under through three rounds. That course was gettable every single day. Um, but it was nice to see the nerves on a Sunday. The crowd there, you know, that, that type of atmosphere to where you didn't want to disappoint these people. When there's nobody there, it was kind of mundane for those guys out there. But that's why a guy like Brooks – who fucking, you know, 
whatever whatever the people want to say about him, he's cocky, he's an asshole. When when it matters and there's people around, he even said it in his post game co- uh, news conference. He likes to show off, and he fucking showed off because when you chip in on 17 from where he was at and get yourself to 19 under, I mean, he almost made birdie on 18 too. But essentially, Jordan and Xander. All they had to do was fucking shoot one under and they're in the playoff. Two under and they win the golf tournament. And neither of them can fucking do it. It was, you know, they just, I, I hate to say it, but they, they shot their load on Saturday. That's what happened. I mean, it's, <laughs> get all hyped up. You know, you, you go to the strip club a little too early. You get a, you have a few too many cocktails like Jordan <laughs> Spieth did. And sure, you finish too early, buddy. It's just the way it goes. It happens. Xander's done it, it for weeks now. He's playing incredible golf these last six, nine months. But it really showed when the pressure was on. Uh, Jordan Spieth definitely has some demons. Xander Shoffley has some demons out there. I mean, those two tee shots on on 17 by both of them, Xander and, and Jordan, just, I mean, Xander was just a straight pull into the pond, and then Jordan just hit like a, a Healy duck hook that rolled for about 150 yards into the water. Just And he was bitching complaining about, well, ah, wh- why wouldn't it stop? It's like, come on, Jordan, like you know better than that. Like you're not going to. You're not gonna pipe a three wood down there off the heel and and not and put any backspin on that damn thing. No, everybody. I mean, I, watching the TV as soon as he hit it, I go, "That's in the water." And my dad's like, "No way!" I'm like, yeah, watch. You know, and because it freaking hit and it started going and everything slopes to the left towards that water and it, it rolled on the green at one point and then <laughs> see you later. Yeah, it was exciting. It was fun to watch. It got me, you know, pumped up. It fucking, you know, start start watching it about two o'clock. Finish it go straight into the Super Bowl. It was a great day for sports. It was, it was incredible. And, and I, Jeff, I gotta ask, I mean, Brooks Kepka, I mean, it's, he, he, ex- he expressed it in the, in his press conference. These last 18 months has seemed like a uh, very dark place for him. He seemed like he, uh, he was like almost tearing up. I, I hate to say it, but I, I love to see like, fuck this guy is, he's one of those guys that makes golf entertaining and he moves the needle in a different way. I mean, he's not Patrick Reed, don't get me wrong, but he's definitely not Jordan Spieth. He's that asshole that like is gonna tweet shit out. He's gonna make fun of Randall Chambly. He's gonna make fun of other players. He's gonna talk shit to them when they're playing too slow. And he goes out there and fucking he's had a hard time these last eight, 18 months. And it it seemed like he was rather excited. And I think this was a big win for him. It, it was, and and the way he did it, I mean, you know, to shoot five hundred in your last six holes, um, come down the stretch when he sees everybody kind of faltering, he put it in high gear and he hit every shot good. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like he got lucky. He played really well. He hit it close. He made his putts. I mean, he, he fucking deserved it. Um, I was just shocked to see those guys fold like that. I, I thought there'd be low numbers. They'd be in the 20, 21, 22 under range to win this golf tournament. I didn't think Brooks had a chance, uh, but Hey, if everybody's going to collapse, he stepped up. Well, and I think it shows when, when you've got a set of fans out there, like, like they have out the waste management or, you know, I've seen the pictures. Okay, not everyone was masked up. They were sucking down cocktails, having a good time, screaming and yelling at these guys. And that's what you're going to get. I mean, I can't imagine Xander being a guy who is a pressure-packed player. I mean, he's never won a major championship. He's never won an event that was a full-field event where he's having to battle against some of the best players in the world. And I think when Brooks Koepka has got all his – everything going for him, which he had this week, was just incredible. I mean, he, he hit his 18th – his, his drive on 18, 300 and like 69 yards. Like there was no way the water was in play. Like the, there was no way spraying it. He, he had complete control of his game and his iron play was incredible. I mean, he was, he was stuffing six irons to 15 feet on par fives. He got confident as the day went on where the leaders started to just try to hang on uh, and not fall apart. It, it, but they did fall apart. Uh, and Xander's, He's kind of got that Tony Finau thing about him right now. Like he's a hell of a golfer, hell of a golfer, especially, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But Sundays, he just can't get it done. You know, second place, that's going to wear on you because how many times can you do it? I, I mean, I wanted to pick him every week. I've been picking him. I think I've picked him two, three times already this year. But, dude, yeah. second place ain't going to cut it. No, it's not. It's absolutely not going to cut it. But so, well, I mean, what, I mean, you got 5,000 fans there. I mean, Jeff, it, it definitely moved the needle, and it moved the needle for some players. And it definitely it showed other players' weaknesses, especially when you get some of that crowd noise. There was something that was brought up by Justin Thomas, and he said with all of the intricacy of betting now being involved in golf, where you have daily betters, he even brought up the fact like you might have some guys in the fans 
who are going to start chirping at players and starting to manipulate guys, maybe start yelling in their backswing when they've got a large dollar amount on the line. I mean, I think JT brought up a good point. And if you start chipping at guys, and I mean, we saw it out in Saudi Arabia, and we'll get to that with Dustin Johnson, but if you've got, I don't know, 10 grand on the line, and you need Tony Fino to get another second place, like it just, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on the whole betting and, and having live fans out there? Well, that's, that's absolutely a reality because in other sports, screaming and yelling is encouraged and it's, and it's allowed 24 seven in golf. It's discouraged, you know, until after the shots hit. Um, but I think you're going to see more and more of that. I mean, if it's coming, it's coming down the stretch and you know, somebody's got a big putt or a big shot. Um, you might see somebody do something that's going to fuck somebody up. Uh, whether it's screaming, yelling, throwing something at them, running out into the fuck their their line of view, doing something crazy. Because hey, here's what okay, you're gonna get trespassed, you're gonna get kicked out of the tournament. Who cares? But you might win a three figure, you know, or four figure, five figure, six figure bet, whatever you you got on the line. So I mean, if- golf's the one game where, dude, a scream in your backswing is going to make you hit a bad shot most of the time. Because if you're not used, to, I mean, you spent the last thirty years of your life practicing golf, it's completely quiet. I mean, I, the only person I think could, that could handle that type of, of stress really is Tiger Woods. I mean, Tiger Woods is, he's, I mean, that's, he was trained to do that. I mean, his dad was notorious for like absolutely fucking with him, like as a little kid. So it's just, I, I, I was thinking about that and I'm like waste management. I mean, limited amount of fans, but then you got, you know, you got Borat, you know, running around acting like a goofball at 48 years old, which was <laughs> crazy to me, but it just got me thinking it just, Ha, ha, ha.